I'm Andy Lazor. I'm a water quality specialist with the University of Maryland Extension, and I'm pleased to discuss prolonging the life of your septic system. We tend to take care of things that we value. Therefore, understanding the value of your septic system is very important. In this webinar, we will cover the value of a system, how a system works, and the how and why of system maintenance. It's good to consider that your septic system is the most expensive appliance or mechanical system in your home. A septic system is much more expensive than traditional appliances such as a refrigerator and even considerably more expensive than a heating and air conditioning or HVAC system. Also important to note is that the typical lifespan of a septic system which is properly maintained, is about 20 to 30 years. Not maintaining a system can greatly reduce the lifespan of that system and lead to additional costs for needed repairs. The annual maintenance cost of a septic system is actually less than an HVA system when you compare maintenance costs versus original purchase price. Understanding these cost comparisons can help you better appreciate and value your system and encourage you, hopefully, to commit to properly maintaining your system. In addition to valuing your system due to high investment costs, a properly operating system maintains your property value. Maintaining your system will maximize its lifespan and therefore reduces the frequency of needed drain field replacement, which requires a new site on your property. If available sites on your property are limited, this can be especially challenging and can further impact property value. Also very important is that a properly operating septic system reduces environmental contamination and public health risks due to direct contact with wastewater or contamination of drinking water wells. Understanding the basics of how a system works can help explain the importance of maintaining your system. A conventional septic system is a relatively simple device using gravity. Wastewater flows from the house to the septic tank to allow for solid settling in wastewater storage. Then the water goes into a distribution box, which provides for equal distribution of wastewater to the various drain field trenches where the wastewater infiltrates into the soil for treatment. Note that a system is designed to where the treated wastewater will ultimately enter groundwater. This diagram shows the process flow of wastewater from the house into the first chamber, which allows for solids to settle in fats, oils, and grease, termed scum, to float. The first chamber allows for a specific storage volume of wastewater before the water travels into the second chamber, in which a small degree of additional solids and fat, soil, and greases will be collected. From the second chamber, wastewater gravity flows out of the tank towards the drain field. A tank for a three bedroom home is typically at least a thousand gallons in volume, which provides for about two days of storage. The drain field or soil dispersal area of a septic system is where the bulk of treatment, including nutrients and pathogens occurs. The size of the drain field is determined by the number of bedrooms, the quality of the soil and its ability to accept wastewater, and the depth of the soil to either the water table or some other limiting or restrictive layer. It is specifically designed for that location on your property. New homes are required to have a dedicated repair area that will provide for replacement of the drain field when necessary. 
Drain fields are designed to distribute wastewater over the soil to allow for infiltration. The most common drain field system design is gravel trenches, where a perforated pipe inside the gravel distributes the wastewater over the soil. Technology has advanced and several other drain field materials and designs can be used. For example, drip dispersal is used in conjunction with an advanced treatment or BAT unit. And wastewater is slowly pumped and released through the porous tubing in the shallow regions of the soil, generally about six to 12 inches deep. Sand mound is used where there exists lower or poorer quality soils or a high water table. As mentioned, soil is where the bulk of wastewater treatment occurs and therefore it is extremely important in the treatment process. Soil is a natural filter providing for both chemical and biological treatment, including reduction of nutrients, organics, and pathogenic bacteria. Drain field system design is based on a minimum of four feet of soil depth to provide for adequate treatment. In cases where the four feet of soil depth is not present, then an elevated dispersal area, such as an at grade or sand mound, is required. This diagram shows the process of wastewater treatment in a system. The nitrogen from the household wastewater transformed initially from ammonia to nitrite, then nitrate by beneficial bacteria in the soil. This process is known as nitrification and it requires oxygen. And therefore it is very important to protect the drain field from such things as flooding or compaction of the soil by driving over it or covering it with a structure. Other beneficial bacteria in the absence of oxygen, which is located typically in the deeper regions of the soil, can convert the nitrate into nitrogen gas, and that process is called denitrification. The nitrogen gas then can be released into the atmosphere. The boxes in the red show that a septic tank will only reduce nitrogen by about 5% and a properly functioning drain field can reduce nitrogen an additional 25 to 40%. If an advanced treatment unit or BAT unit is used, nitrogen reduction can be improved greatly up to 55 to 77%. Note that no treatment is 100%, whether it's a septic system or wastewater treatment plant. Proper maintenance will help result in the greatest treatment possible. Maintaining your septic system requires several basic practices. The first is to have your tank pumped at least every three to five years, depending on the number of people in the home. Pumping will remove both the solids and scum, thereby reducing the risk of either entering the drain field, which can clog the soil pores, reducing water infiltration, and leading to the drain field prematurely malfunctioning. This table shows that pumping frequency depends on the size tank and the number of people in the home. The smaller the tank and the greater the number of people, the greater the frequency the pumping is required. Note that BAT units require special pumping procedures. Be sure your pumpers is familiar with how to properly pump your BAT unit to reduce the risk of damaging that unit. A second practice is conserving water by fixing leaks. Your system is designed to handle a specific amount of water per day. Leaking toilets and other excessive water use can add a significant amount of water and may lead to overloading the system. Garbage disposals should not be used, even so-called septic-friendly disposals. These can add to the organic matter content of the wastewater, which may not settle out or be broken down before it enters the grain field. Dumping excess chemicals, cleaners, bleaches, and paints, etc., 
can kill the beneficial bacteria in your system or clog soil pores, thereby reducing treatment effectiveness and may shorten the system lifespan. However, a normal amount of household cleaners is acceptable. A very important practice is to only flush toilet paper and no wipes or anything else. Toilet paper will dissolve and break down quickly. Wipes can clog filters, pipes, or BAT pumps. Products may be marketed as flushable or septic friendly, but they will cause problems leading to malfunctions and costly repairs. Since the drain field needs to breathe or allow for oxygen transfer in the soil for biological and chemical treatment, it is important to channel stormwater away from your septic system. Standing water over the drain field can overload the system and block oxygen flow. Also driving over the drain field with vehicles will compact the soil and reduce the ability of wastewater to infiltrate or percolate into the soil and therefore reduce the lifespan of the drain field. Trees and their roots will grow and travel to the moisture and nutrients found in the septic system and can clog pipes leading to a system failure. Trees should be planted at least 25 feet away from your system and the repair area. Lastly, if you have a BAT unit, maintain your service contract and do not turn off the system. BAT units have a much smaller solid selling chamber than a conventional septic tank. And therefore, if turned off, the unit will likely require a greatly increased frequency of pumping, which potentially could cost much more than the three to $18 per month electrical operating costs. In addition, there is a risk of increasing solids entering the drain field, which again, shortens the lifespan. This is a nice EPA septic smart infographic that reminds you of the various maintenance practices that we discussed. And finally, here is a nice list of other septic system resources to help you learn more about your septic system. Our website has a number of fact sheets and videos and both the EPA and MDE on-site division websites have valuable resources to help you better understand your system and how to maintain it. Thank you.